Yes, I want to talk about prayer this morning and just encourage you in your walk. There's so many different kinds of prayer, first of all, let me say. But prayer is to a believer and a child of God what breathing is to our bodies. It's exhaling and it's inhaling. It should be as natural. It should be as daily. It's not just an event. But praying without ceasing is a natural communion of your heart with the heart of God on a continual basis. It's keeping your minds and your thoughts focused on Him and just whispering, thank you, Jesus, you're with me today, everything we do. It says pray without ceasing in Thessalonians. So when we talk about communion prayer, that's where, like in a relationship, two people in intimacy sit down and talk about the deepest things in your heart. Revelations 3.20 says, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. Jesus is talking to his church because I want to come in and I want to have sweet communion and fellowship. Just sit down and talk to me like a person. Tell me what you're thinking, where you're hurting, what you need. Talk to me about your dreams. Let's take a walk together like he did with Abraham in the garden and he walked with Eden. Let's just talk as friends, just like you'd pick up the phone and you'd share and talk with your best friend. There's nothing he doesn't know anyway. There's no secret hidden from him, but he loves for us to talk about it because we let him in to the places in our heart that we think are hidden, but he knows about them anyway. So he wants to be our best friend. That's communion prayer and fellowshipping prayer. And then there's asking prayer where we can come and say, you know, Lord, we have this need or I have a friend who needs you or is sick or we stand in the gap, as Ezekiel says, for somebody else who has a need because we know the Father who created them and who has the answer to that need. And so he said, come and ask, come and tell me. Come, uh, Hebrews 4.16, come boldly before my throne of grace and tell me what the needs are. Frustrated, you're meeting a situation in your life you don't have answers for. Well, I want to tell you who does, and he does, an answer for everything. And it's in the Word. Sometimes answers are delayed, and we don't know why it's delayed. But do you know what? He's working, Jesus is working with so many pieces of the puzzle to put everybody in the position that they need to be for one life to get saved. Who's going to witness? Who's praying? Who's going to disciple them? And there's reasons for delay that we don't always understand because we may be waiting on the obedience of another person. Or there may be something in our heart where the Lord's saying, I'm going to answer that, but I want to teach you in this situation how to hear me, how to be obedient, rejoicing in the battlefield, giving thanks in everything. Maybe the, the key to unlock that door for that answered prayer is prayer and fasting. And we need to hear what God's saying. And so we learn from persevering prayer. It changes us. And, and he said, that's called faith. Luke 18 talks about a woman before an unjust judge pounding and pounding on the door. And it said, even though he wasn't a believer, he got so tired of her constant pounding that he said, I'm just going to give her what she wants. And she got what she wanted because of her perseverance. There's power in perseverance. In James 5, it talks about Elijah being a man just as we are, but he had effectual. Effectual means it's effective. It's to the mark. Fervent means full of heat and passion and intensity. And that kind of prayer could shut the heavens up from rain and open the heavens up and bring rain because he knew how to pray. And in Luke 18, back to the woman with the unjust judge, Jesus said, I'll give you that kind of answer, but will I find such faith on the earth? Luke 18, 8. So the Lord's looking for us to Acts 7, 7, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 7, 7. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. And isn't it uh, neat that the um, first letters of those words, ask, seek and knock 
all spell ask. So the Lord wants us to, but persevering prayer changes us from something of wanting to do things in our own strength, self-dependency, trying to get quick answers to depending totally on the Lord and realizing that He's got this thing. And sometimes answers do come, but not the way we asked. Sometimes we ask the wrong way. James 4 says you didn't get what you wanted because you asked amiss. Your motives weren't right. Sometimes was it enough faith? Sometimes is there another obstacle we don't understand? But you know what? When we pray for somebody to be healed and God still takes them home, the bottom line is He's sovereign. He loves us. And He says, keep on coming. Don't let one answered prayer, unanswered prayer, ever shipwreck your faith. Keep on coming. Keep on going. And we go from glory to glory and level to level in our faith and in our experience because we keep on with that boldness, with that fervency, with that effectiveness in prayer. It's our call. It's our privilege. It's our responsibility because it was the lifestyle of Jesus. So he teaches us to pray. And that's the one thing the disciples said, please, Lord, teach us to pray. They saw his power and miracles came from his prayer life. So Jesus models to us what we need to live on a daily basis. And we say in Africa, where I'm from, it's not optional. It's do or die, just like breathing is to a person. So I encourage you to press in deeper. Know Him in prayer, and He will speak to your hearts. It's two-way. Speak and listen. Speak and listen. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I'm J.D. Walt, and I work for Seedbed. And our mission is to gather, connect, resource, and commission the people of God to sow for a great awakening. We would love for you to join us. If your heart is as our heart, hey, we'd love for you to subscribe to this video, like it, share it with others. Thank you so much 